on that point of understanding my inadequacies or someone's inadequacies, I, I really believe um, that it's really difficult to undergo self-development if you don't have self-awareness. And I was I was really trying to understand from your writings how someone is to build their self-awareness. It's almost like the unknown unknown. If you don't have yeah. it, how do you build the thing? Well, I know a good exercise for that. It's like a prayer in some sense. In fact, I would say it's proper prayer. If you want to know something about yourself, sit on your bed one night and say to yourself, you got to mean this. Like, you got to be desperate. This is no game, this. It's like... My life is not everything I want it to be, and perhaps it's not everything that I need it to be. And by need, I mean my life is so unbearable that the suffering that's attendant upon that is make me nihilistic, cynical, bitter, resentful, homicidal, genocidal, in the, unable to have a good relationship, pro, prone to punish people for their virtues because of my jealousy. Uh, driving the proclivity to see evil everywhere except within my own heart. Like, these are problems, man. And you ask yourself, you sit on the bed and say, okay, man, I'm ready to learn something. Like, what? what's one thing I'm doing wrong that I know I'm doing wrong that I could fix that I would fix? It's like, you meditate on that, you'll get an answer. And it won't be one you want but it'll be the necessary one, you know? And it, it's often something that will point you to small things. So Carl Jung said, people in the modern world don't see God because they don't look low enough. And so imagine you're in your messy bedroom, you know, and you're sitting on the edge of the bed trying to have an honest dialogue with yourself. And the little voice says, you know, it's pretty disgusting in here. And you think, well, I'm way above such trivial niceties as organizing my room. It's like, well, that's pride. That's arrogance. If you're above organizing what's actually yours, how in the world are you ever going to organize anything else? And so you get on your knees and you think, well, it's time to, you know, take a brush to the toilet. And maybe that's where you start. And so, and that works. Like, that works. You start making those micro-improvements like real micro-improvements, real on-the-ground actual micro-improvements to things you know that are wrong, you'll improve unbelievably rapidly. What you're talking about there sounds to me a lot like um, an overdose of arrogance and also the need for humility. Do you think the mm -hmm. Western world suffers from arrogance because of our, our, our relative um, privilege and luxury that we kind of overlook? Of course. Well, that's a temptation, right? I mean, when the when the left, radical lefty types go after people for their unearned privilege, they have a point. Now, the point is, the existentialists called it thronness, which is enough, that's a Heideggerian term. And thronness is the fact that we kind of experience life as if we're th tossed into it, thrown into it. You know, you're you're male and not female, you're, you're Hindu and not Christian, you're tall and not short, you have an arbitrary range of talents and an arbitrary range of limitations, none of which, in some sense, you chose. It's the cards you're dealt. Now, some of those are cards of privilege. You know, maybe you're born intelligent, maybe you're born symmetrical, maybe you're born healthy, um, maybe you're born into a culture where it's much easier not to be absolutely deprived. Maybe your parents are rich. And so all of that in some sense is unearned. Now, along with that comes a good dose of existential guilt because at the same time, and this is true for anyone, regardless of their cultural background, the ground we walk on is soaked in the blood of historical atrocity. And so that's on you. Because, you know, people think, well, who's the Nazi? Well, it's the fascist or it's the, or who's the radical communist? It's the radical left-wing ideologue. And the fundamental truth of the matter is that's best dealt with as a spiritual matter, is the adversary is within, really, most profoundly. And so you have to take the responsibility for that historical atrocity onto yourself. I was talking to Guy Ritchie this week about his movie, King Arthur. It's quite an interesting movie in many ways. 
And when Arthur, who could be the hero, takes the sword, he's so overcome by visions of his murderous uncle that he can't pick up the weapon. Well, think about that. Now, you have weapons at your disposal, but they've been used by your murderous uncle. How dare you wield them? And the answer is, maybe it's easy just to leave the sword on the ground because you do want to be responsible for atrocities going forward and don't think you couldn't be and don't think you might not enjoy it. And so, the way you pay for your privilege is with your virtue. I mean that most particularly. You have these opportunities and this existential guilt and the way you expiate that and atone is by doing your best to live the best possible life you can manage, to speak the truth, to treat people with respect, to abide by the principles of the dignity of the individual and to put your house in order. And that's how you pay for your unearned privilege, all of us. And we all have our privileges and our, and our curses, you know, all of us have that. That's why it's not useful to be envious of people. You know, you see some, you're a young man, you see someone drive by in a Ferrari with a blonde and you think, my God, he's got everything. And you know, the woman in the car is a prostitute who's got a cocaine addiction and her, her life is just one catastrophe after another. And he's had to lie and cheat his way into this position. And he's afraid that everything's going to come crashing down on him. And that's what you're jealous of. And it's just not that profound. You don't want someone else's fate. Man, your fate's enough. And your adventure's enough. It's plenty. It's more than you can ever fully realize. And so that's also part of the reason that we all believe that the individual has some intrinsic dignity. It's don't be so sure that your position and your room is so damn trivial. It might be your attitude towards it that's trivial. And if you're in dire straits and dire circumstances, just look at how much opportunity you have to make things better. So... Not that it's easy. I, you don't even want it to be easy.